Lohengrin is Wagner's sixth opera, I believe. And uh, the first two are not well, so well known. The first one's called Die Feen, which is the fairies. Second one is called Das Liebesverbot, which means kind of the ban on love, which is actually based on a Shakespeare play called Measure for Measure. The third one is known a little bit better, Rienzi, especially from the overture, which everybody's you know, heard, I think. You know. Everybody knows that, that's wonderful. But it's a very long opera and it doesn't get performed very often, probably because it's very long and not as interesting as the other very long operas. <laughs> but uh, um, then we get to the Flying Dutchman, Fliegen Holländer, which we all know pretty well, which is a reasonable length opera, normal length. It's even more normal when you don't take any intermissions. It's quite quick, I think it's two hours and 15 minutes, depending on the conductor. And <clears throat> then with each progressive opera, they get longer. So if The Flying Dutchman used to be on three records, you get to Tannhäuser, which is on four records, and you get to Lohengrin, which is on five records. I'm talking old days when I was a kid. I used to have, remember records? Vinyl, <laughs> the funny thing is that they turn around like this and you put a needle on it. Anyway, so it's interesting also that this opera is the opera right before the ring cycle starts. And there are some parallels. You hear harmonically how he's developing and going towards that direction. Whereas the <clears throat> earlier operas, I mean, Dutchman is still somewhat traditional in the grand romantic German opera style. Tannhäuser's moving on a little bit more in this direction. Lohengrin is a kind of a last gasp of the big German romantic opera. It has everything, huge choruses, many soloists, big orchestral passages, and it's simply glorious. Okay, so we're back to this opera. Um, <clears throat> this is based a little bit on the Wolfram von Eschenbach story of Parsifal and you'll see that Lohengrin and Parsifal are related. He tells us that at the end of the opera. But uh, <clears throat> it um, captured his imagination, and he took a little while to start to write the sketches, but he was obviously turned on by it. And actually, Schumann was supposedly interested in it too, but he decided not to write it as Wagner was doing it. He wrote something called Genoveva, but that's another opera. Um, just to go a little more history, Liszt was very supportive of Wagner at this time, and he loved this opera, and he, com he actually conducted the first performances in Weimar, and Wagner was unable to hear it, obviously, because he had to be in exile, and he didn't hear it for, I think, many years. I think in Vienna was the first time he heard it later. They didn't have uh, live you know, telecasts back then, or you know, what do we call the video things like the Met did. He would have been able to see it then, but unfortunately he didn't. So mainly what I'm going to talk about, I'll try and get very sketchy version of the story, because it's very complicated. You see, I prepare myself with my little post-it <laughs> post notes, so I know what pages to use. Um, I will try to do it in, uh, in uh, the order it appears. Okay, the first thing we hear is this beautiful overture, which is very slow, and it actually starts in the main key of the piece, which mm -hmm. is A major which is a very bright key for me. It, it shines. And first thing we hear is extremely high, shimmering strings. Violins come in. And then some winds come in on top. And then we have these solo violins that are really high up here. It's, it's magic, actually. Those are the violins. Those are the flutes and oboe. And here's the high strings. That sound is supposed to be the sound of the grail or the, 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 the brightness of the grail glowing. And the real grail motif is this one.
so beautiful. <gasps> you could, oh, it's just, it's so moving and so wonderful. And uh, it's interesting that this overture starts very, very high instruments. And as the overture goes on, it comes into lower and lower groups. For instance, we get into the dominant, and the dominant means the, you know, the, the key that leads you to the main key. If this is the main key, that's the tonic, we call that, and this is the dominant, which is the, I actually put a seventh in it, because it usually leads you back to the main thing. This is a subdominant, by the way. Just so you know, you can tell your friends you know all about music theory. Okay, anyway, so the winds come in now, in the dominant key. So we have at the same time the strings above, the violins are playing a counter melody now. So the thing is already developing. So we get through this, and then the third arrangement, or the third arrival, is lower instruments still. We have the horns coming in, we have the violas, the cellos, and the basses. So they're down here. So for me, the whole overture is actually opening up from the top, getting richer and richer and richer until the, the, the big entrance at the end, which I'll explain in a minute. But again, we have a lot of counter melodies going here. It's just so beautiful, I can't even talk about how beautiful it is. Anyway, by the time we get to the end of the overture, finally we have a big, big version of this theme in the brass. Trumpets, trombones, tuba, and this is in the dominant key. Right, and it's huge. Let me see if I can prepare the, the arrival of this. can't stop because it's so beautiful. There is a new motif here at the end after the big climax, this one. basically, in some ways, translates to separation anxiety. It sounds like a medical term, but it actually has to do with Lohengrin having to leave at some point in the opera, which I will 
tell you about later. Okay, so we start the first act. Now this takes place in on the banks, I think, of Antwerp at that time. And we have the arrival of the King Heinrich, who we call Henry the Fowler in English. And he's arrived to lead troops to fight against <coughs> foreign invaders. And uh, he always he's accompanied by music by four trumpets. And <coughs> you hear them at the very beginning of this thing. And also, this motive is also connected to the Herrufer, who's a herald who makes announcements. He's kind of like a newscaster, that he, he comes out and he tells everybody what the king has said and what's, what's going on. So after the overture is ended in this beautiful A major, we have an A major start in the orchestra. in C major. And those are the trumpets. And the Herrufer starts talking about how the king will be arriving any minute and he will help you through this great time of war and trouble. And uh, as I said, C major is always associated with King Heinrich, König Heinrich, and he shows up in a second, but he actually sings in E major for some reason first. I'm not sure why, but he does. <laughs> yeah, you like my king voice? Right? That's right. But I love this line. It says, Herr Gott, bewahr uns vor der Ungarn Wut. You know, protect us from the wrath of the Hungarians. Herr Gott, bewahr uns vor der Ungarn Wut. Anyway, he goes on. These king figures in these operas always talk nonstop. They, they, either the one in the Landgraf in Tannhäuser, long speeches, and the, this king is no different. He goes on and on and on. I don't need to tell you everything he says, but obviously the, the chorus is very impressed and they, you know, sing back to him in C major. Mit Gott, der Deutsches, Deutsches Anyway, he says, I'm going to summon you to Mainz so we can get a army together and deal with all these battles that we must do to protect our land. But first, I have been called here because of a conflict that I've heard about with um, <clears throat> two people. And the uh, Count Friedrich von Telramund has made a complaint against Elsa von Brabant. And he's going to come here and tell us all about it. And his very noble music, Telramund, is very serious music. And he says, thank you, king. Dank König dir dass du zu richten kamst. Die Wahrheit könnt ich und treu ist mir fremd. He says, I've come here so that you, King, can judge this disagreement between me and another person. And he says, I always tell the truth. I don't know anything about deceiving people or lying. But the orchestra right afterwards plays this rather, I don't know, what should we say, suggestive music saying that he may be saying that he never lies, but the orchestra is saying, <laughs> because he basically is charging that the, <clears throat> I should say, the young Duchess of Brabant, Elsa, somehow murdered her brother, Gottfried, when they were wandering off into the forest. And she came back one day without him, and she was extremely nervous. So Friedrich says she must have done something with him, even though she's pretending that she misses him and she's worried about him. He um, is going to accuse her of having murdered him. And the king says, oh my god, all right, we'll have her come out here and we'll deal with this in a court situation. And this motive, this is 
basically Anklage or accusation. And Terun basically says, I accuse Elsa von Brabant of murdering her brother. Anyway, the chorus is quite shocked by this, and they say that this is a huge amount of guilt that he's putting on this, this woman. This is a very upsetting thing. It's very beautiful what the chorus sings, actually. Already it's getting to be very chromatic Wagner, right? I love it, every note of this opera. Anyway, so the king says, all right, we must call the accused here. And they do. But of course, the one who announces it is the herald. And it's interesting, he always makes these big statements, appear, please. And usually they appear very quickly. Elsa manages to get there in, I think, 30 seconds. So she must, she must be waiting in the wings somewhere. So we have um, the Herrufer, these trumpets again. He's making the, he's starting to say that we're going to have the, the trial. And he says, I call you now, Elsa. Drum ruf ich klagend laut und hell. He says, I will call you loud and brightly. Although it's interesting that the orchestra plays piano at that part. It's actually, then ruf ich klagend orchestra leise und, und mürkt. I don't know. Klagend hell. Right? And he says, Elsa, appear. Elsa! Erscheine hier zur Stelle, appear at once. And guess what? She appears at once. <laughs> here she is. <laughs> and this is one of her motives. Very sad motive. Sit in. The chorus is saying, oh, look at that. Here she comes. Sie not die Hart beklagte. Now, that's a motive that's quite important, this one. This is called Unschuld or innocence. So the orchestra is already telling us that she's not guilty. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to get through the motives because they're the most important thing, I think, when you hear them in the context of the opera. Um, anyway, she does show up, and the king says, will you accept me as your judge? And she says, yes. And uh, she's also, he says, what do you have to say about this uh, accusation? And all she says is, Mein armer Bruder, which means my poor brother. And the chorus is already a little bit in love with her, let's say, because she's so pure and she's so sweet and she's so stupid. No, I'm sorry. She's, a, <laughs> she's a little bit weak in the head, as we say, you know? But she's, a, she's, a good, she's so good and so sweet that, of course, everybody wants to marry her. You know? But anyway, only one gets to do this. Anyway, so the chorus is just enraptured by her. Wie wunderbar, welch seltsames Gebar. And what beautiful manner she has. And it's just wonderful. Anyway, the king says, well, what do you have to say for yourself? And she talks about how she had a dream and she was, she's been very sad and upset about her brother disappearing and she's and she's hoped that somehow somebody would come and rescue her. And she had this dream where she saw this knight in shining armor, and he would come and be her champion and rescue her. 
But she starts out with this rather famous <coughs> Elsa's Traum aria. Einsam in trüben Tagen hab ich zu Gott gefleht. I prayed to God. Des Herzens tiefs als Klagen ergoss ich im Gebet. And Simba, she says, from all my my moanings that were so painful and loud, I sent them into the winds. Da drang aus meinem Stöhnen ein Laut zu klagevoll dir zu gewalt gemetönen weit in die Lüfte schwoll. Then she says basically after this, I fell asleep, and then this dream came, and I heard this motive in the night. That because he had just seen a vision of this knight in shining armor. Shining? No. Shining. It's been a very long week. You must forgive me for my tongue-tied words sometimes. Anyway, that's a motive that will be associated with Lohengrin. But it's interesting now, before you actually see him appear, it's in A-flat major, which is a key lower, a half step lower than the usual key for Lohengrin, because Lohengrin always appears in shining A major. But at this point, he hasn't appeared yet, and it's in her dreams. And I think A-flat's a very nice key to dream in. It's, very, it's a very dreamy. Dreamy key, I just, I love it, you know? So she's dreaming. And it's also very soft in the orchestra. So it's kind of, it's basically in her head. And this motive is, is something to do with his heroic nature and his value as a knight. very, as the Germans would say, tapfer, because it's, it's dotted and it has a very noble aspect to it. Anyway, then she goes on with another motive, and we call this trost, which means consolation, that somehow he's going to come and save her. Mit tüchtigem Gebaren gab Tröstung er mir ein, des Ritters will ich wahren, er soll mein Streiter sein. He will be my champion, he will come. The chorus likes that so much that they sing it too. Bewahre uns des Himmels Schuld, das klar wir sehen, wer hier schuld. And then the king says, Friedrich, are you sure that this woman is guilty? I mean, she seems so sweet. How could something like this happen? He says, no, no, I'm, I'm sure. And I want to know who in this, in this court with all these people around will fight me and <clears throat> challenge me because the idea is you have to have a, have a battle and God will guide the, the one who is in the right, right? So Friedrich will obviously, Friedrich Telman will defend his honor saying that Elsa is guilty and you need another person who will fight for Elsa because Elsa is obviously not going to lift a sword and have a fight with the baritone. That's <coughs> not very smart. Anyway, plus she's not that bright anyway. She'd, uh, but, <coughs> so, first Tellerman says, who is going to fight on her behalf? Nobody. Uh, no, we would never. Because Tellerman is actually a very respected count in this, in this area. So, they, nobody wants to do it, so <clears throat> we have to maybe call and see if somebody will come in and, and do it and fight for Elsa. We hear this motive a lot. This is Gottes Kampf, basically God, God's battle or something that, a battle where God will lead the person to victory who is in the right. 
Anyway, um, <clears throat> since there's nobody there, um, they decide that they have to ask the Herald to make an announcement in his loudest voice possible if anybody is going to come and, and fight for Elsa. So we have <clears throat> the trumpets, the Herald's trumpets, which are playing actually a different theme. They usually play this. They also play the right notes. This time they're playing. And the Herald says, Wer hier im Gotteskampf zu streiten kam, für Elsa von Brabant, who will come here and fight for Elsa, please come forward. Der dritte vor, der dritte vor. Nobody, I guess. <laughs> and the chorus says, Yes, nobody's answering. Ohn Antwort ist der Ruf verhalt. And Friedrich says, You see, I'm in the right. I have accused her, and nobody is coming to defend her. So she must be guilty. And we have this motive, which actually doesn't have a name. And I have this Wagner book of light motifs from every opera, but this one, for some reason, doesn't have a name. So I'm going to give it a name. Elsa's nervousness. <laughs> and she says, oh, dear king, even though nobody answered the first time, I'm sure that if you do it a second time, he'll hear, because he lives very far away, and he'll have to, you know, have to maybe have the, the herewolf or the, the heralds do it even louder, so he hears it. And the king is so, so moved by Elsa that he says, okay, fine, let's do it a second time. So, of course, we have the, the trumpets announcing it. And this time, it's up a half step. V you can hear it's a half step up because my voice is starting to go. Anyway, <coughs> he says, please come forward. Der trete vor, der trete vor. I guess nobody's coming. Timpani's playing. We have this rather sad chord for the trombones. In düstrem Schweigen richtet Gott Remember that motive? I call Elsa's nervousness. Anyway, the chorus says, well, it's very quiet, nothing's happening. And then Elsa starts to pray. Oh, du trugest zu ihm meine Klage, zu mir trat er auf dein Gebot. Oh, Herr, du in meinem Ritter sage, dass er mir helf in meine Not. Please have my my night come and help me in my hour of need. And this is interesting because up to now, the only chorus you've heard is men. And the men actually sing a great deal in this opera. They sing much more than the women do, but every once in a while the women get to sing too. And so this is the first time they come in. Oh, the chorus is sounding pretty good today. Anyway, so anyway, she says, please, Help me. And then we hear, very soft. Seat, seat. Guess whose motive that is? It's very soft. Because he's taking the, I don't know, he's taking a, <clears throat> he's taking a boat, actually, a very quick boat, because it's drawn by a swan. And I guess these swans are very quick. But he's come all the way from far away, so I guess that's, uh, that's why it took so long. Yeah? Maybe you heard the first time the herald 
called him, but you know, he had to make a reservation and <laughs> e-bookers, and then he had to get on the on the Swan Express. And it takes it's pretty quick, but it still takes a little bit of time. Anyway, so everybody's in complete amazement because they see this this knight in shining armor coming down and drawn by a boat with a swan leading it. And it's wonderful. And everybody says, it's a wonder. Oh my God. And it builds and builds and builds until we get the full glory of Lohengrin's theme. <laughs> there. So we're going to have a big blaze of A major. Anyway, he appears and we hear the grail motive. So the people who have read the Wagner leitmotif book will know where he came from. But the uh, rest of the characters in the opera will not know where he came from until five hours later when he explains it. But that's going to be a while now. And he says... Thank you very much, my dear Swan. Nun sei bedankt, mein lieber Schwan. Zieh durch die weite Flut zurück, dahin, woher mich trug dein Kahn. Zu unserem Glück, drum sei getreu dein Dienst getan. Leb wohl, leb wohl, mein lieber Schwan. This motive is quite important. This is the Swan motive comes a lot. It also appears in Parsifal, actually, in one place, the first time that Parsifal appears, because Parsifal has shot a swan. Isn't that terrible? I don't think it's the same swan, but he, he did. And he's, he's told by Gurnemann, how could you do such a terrible thing here? And you actually hear a, a variant of that motive. <laughs> similar, right? God, I love Parsifal. I love Parsifal. I love the whole family, actually. They're all, it's a very nice family, the Parsifal family. Oh, you're not supposed to know that yet. Well, I'll save that for the end. Anyway, did you, this is also very interesting that the character, Lundgren, comes in and he sings without much orchestra. That's very unusual for Wagner to have it. We call that a cappella, right? When the singer is singing without accompaniment. Anyway, it's, I think it's merciful, too, because as the opera goes on, the orchestra gets louder, and poor Lohengrin has to sing louder and louder to be heard. But anyway, so now the chorus is completely enraptured by this wonderful person who showed up, and they sing this thing. That, this is called Wonne und Zauber, I think. It's, it's kind of amazement of the magic that's happening here. It's like as if by magic... Lohengrin showed up. It has a little bit of a relationship to this music. But that's more the music that you hear when he has to leave. So this is the music when he arrives. Anyway, so Lohengrin says, Hello, Kernish Heinrich. Nice to meet you. And I'm here because I heard that there is a maid who needs a champion to fight for her because she has been accused and she's not guilty. So here I am. Of course, Elsa's extremely happy to see him. And uh, he says to her, I am here to defend you. And if I do win, would you like me to be your husband? I guess this is very quick. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it's OK. Anyway, so he sings this actually to the grail motive. This is interesting. 
Wenn ich im Kampfe für dich siege, willst du, dass ich dein Gatte sei? Willst du deine Füße Elsa, she's in good voice today. Oh. Good. 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 You, think, you think that's good? Wait till you hear me sing Ortrud. I will bring that. Probably the roof will come crashing down. Anyway, <clears throat> put on your hard hats when that comes. Anyway, so that's nice. She's delighted to be asked to be married to this wonderful knight. He says, there's one catch, one thing I must tell you. You must never ask me what my name is. Okay, what do they do though when they get married? I take the Elsa, I take the, hmm, <laughs> no, who are you? I take you tenor, which is always a bit dangerous. Anyway, <clears throat> all right, so this is the motive that you will hear throughout the opera. This is basically, never ask me who I am and where I come from. Okay. Nie sollst du mich befragen, noch wissen Sorge tragen, woher ich kam, der Fall, noch wie mein Raum und Art. I'll never ask, she says. And he says, Elsa, did you really understand what I said? Please get this through your head. And this time it goes up a half step, even higher. I promise the tenor in the opera will sound better than that. But anyway, <clears throat> he says again, don't ask me this, okay? She says, don't worry, I'll never do it. You're my, my hero, and I, I will accept your conditions. <laughs> we'll see about that. Anyway, <clears throat> so after that's gone, Lundgren announces, he says, I am here because Friedrich von Telramund has, has lied and made up these terrible accusations against Elsa, and I'm here to defend her. And that all the, the men have seen this Lundgren with his his shining armor, and he looks very impressive and, and very strong. They all say to Telramund, don't fight him. It, it looks very dangerous. And Telramund says, that's ridiculous. I'd rather be dead than be a coward. So they say, OK, we'll get everything ready for a little fight. That's getting the ring ready for the fight. I think it's almost funny music, don't you? Even Wagner can be funny sometimes, a little bit. Anyway, so of course that means the herald has to make speeches about how, the conditions of the fight, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, which I will not explain right now. But we have the... the Gottes Kampf motive playing a lot of the time. And uh, <clears throat> at the end of this thing, um, he says that God will judge who the right person is. And this is kind of a warning that one should, you know, really respect this. God richtet euch nach Recht und Fug. We have to trust him. So trauet ihm nicht eure Kraft. The two men, Lohengrin and Friedrich, they repeat this singing together in unison. God richt er mich nach Recht und Fug. Judge us justly, God, and we trust him with our strength. Okay, it looks like we're about to have the big fight. Guess who steps in to make another speech? You know who it is, of course, it's the king. You can't do anything without a speech from the king. Basically, 
my Lord God, I am calling you now to be just. And he goes on, and I don't need to go on through all that right now. Please help us know the truth. And then it's interesting, there's a little a cappella ensemble with five characters. We have Elsa and Lohengrin singing together, and we hear a new voice. This is the voice of Ortrud, who is the wife of Friedrich Telramund. Now, originally, Telramund was supposed to marry Elsa, right? Remember, Elsa and Gottfried were the <coughs> children of the Duke of Brabant, who I forgot to mention had died, and on his deathbed gave the custody of these two children to Telramund. But anyway, Telramund was originally supposed to marry Elsa. And then when this whole business happened with her killing her brother, he decided not to, and he took another wife, Ortrud. I guess he prefers mezzo-sopranos to <laughs> sopranos. But anyway, this one, Ortrud is the daughter of Radbo, the prince of Frisia, well, king, or maybe he's a king. Well, he was a prince once, but he's, anyway, he's a king. Anyway, so the first time we hear her, she's actually buried inside an ensemble with lots of people, so you don't actually notice her at the beginning of the opera so much. You certainly notice her later, because she's one of the loudest singers in the whole thing. But anyway, so we start with a little ensemble. Ich baue fest auf seine Kraft. She says, I believe in Telramund's strength, and I know that he can, he can win. Anyway, once they're through that little <coughs> a cappella thing with uh, five voices, the <coughs> male chorus comes in. Des reinen Arm gib den Kraft des falschen Stärke sei er schlaf. Now there's a little parallel to Tannhäuser there. I don't know if you know just the the uh, accompaniment. There's another Tannhäuser place coming up later, but you have to wait for that in the second act. Anyway, so, so once they're finished with that, we, the king's trumpets blare again, and we mean... And uh, <clears throat> it means the battle's about to begin. Um, I like this music because it's almost like film music. It sounds like something from the 30s, like Errol Flynn or something. You can imagine him. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, at the end, guess who wins? Of course, Lohengrin wins, right? And he doesn't actually kill Telramund, even though it's supposed to be a fight to the death, but he's a very sympathetic person. So he says, I, your life belongs to me, but I'm going to give it to you. And I hope with this you will regret and repent the things you have done. And then the whole chorus is, yay, victory! Uh, see, see. We have a new motive. This is called Jubelweise. Basically, I'm very happy that Lohengrin won. Right? That's Elsa up there. Uh, now that's the chorus we're coming in. And that's whose motive? 
Lohengrin, right? Remember that motive. If there's one motive you want to remember, that's the one. Okay, and it's, it's gone up a lot during the act. It started like this. Elsa's dream, and then it went up to the right key when Lohengrin showed up. And this time it's gone up a half step more, which is quite unusual, but I think it's because everybody's so excited that they're singing higher and higher. and so on, and it gets going more and more, and the ladies get to sing again too, which is very nice. But first we have... Here come the ladies. That's the chorus. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it builds up again, and Elsa starts it again. And everybody's singing together, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it's a, uh, well, well, it's too much to play here. See, I'm only through the, the yellow is the first act, the pink is the second act, and the green, what time is it? Oh my God, I have to get faster. This is the, the third act, the green. Anyway, so anyway, we get the big, big finish, and everybody is delighted and happy, except for the Telemund family. Telemund and Ortrud are not very happy. And we have the big ending. <laughs> Now it's intermission. No, not really. Okay, now we get to the second act, and I think the beginning of the second act is really looking forward to the later Wagner operas. It's extremely dark, and, and the colors are somewhat frightening. It starts with a timpani roll. There's another opera that starts with a timpani roll of Wagner. Who knows what it is? Come on, there's people in the orchestra, you must know. I see you. <clears throat> Anybody? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you get the prize. You, you get a live swan at the end of the <laughs> lecture. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. And you. You have to buy the boat, but the swan will happen. Anyway, so at the beginning of this, we have this timpani roll, and we hear a motive in the cellos. Now, this motive is called unheil. You can, you can see that as maybe harm or trying to cause trouble for someone, and this is obviously the idea of this act because Telramund and his wife Ortrud, who's basically a little bit of a witch, she has special dark powers, and she obviously wants to destroy the life of Lohengrin and Elsa, and Telramund is just basically in a, he's in a daze because he, he trusted Ortrud about this whole situation with Elsa, because Elsa, uh, Ortrud is the one who told Telramund that Elsa killed her brother, so he has believed this, and this is the reason he made the, the whole accusation. And he feels now, of course, that he's been betrayed, and that God has abandoned him, and somehow this woman who he's married has, is a witch, and she's driving him to total destruction. But that's in five minutes. First, we have to have the orchestra interlude. We have, as I said, this motive, which is Unheil, and this develops into this. That's the other part of the Unheil motive. Then we get this. You remember that motive? Don't ask me motive.
again. That's very important, this motive. Anyway, we've had the <clears throat> those dark, evil motives and interspersed with the don't, don't ask me motive. And now we have the other part of <clears throat> Lohengrin's motive where he says that you must never ask where I come from. What's also interesting about this is the, the registers in the orchestra that usually you hear it up here. It's usually, when it's played in the orchestra, it's oboes and clarinets and high instruments. This time it's low instruments. Like the English horn plays this, sorry. And this one, big bass clarinet and an English horn, so it's, it's a much more frightening sound. <clears throat> anyway, when this little prelude is over, we hear party music. First, with innocence, right? Because Lohengrin and Elsa are going to get married today. So there are great celebrations, and all were happy. Anyway, except the people who are outside the castle, that's Friedrich and Ortrud. And of course, he's completely miserable. <laughs> Erhebe dich, Genoss in meiner Schmach. Der junge Tag darf hier uns nicht mehr sehen. Isn't that wonderful dark music? It's so great. Ich kann nicht fort, hier bin ich gemacht. Aus diesem Grund. This fist is unsere Feindes. Lass saugen mich eine furchtbare Tüte nicht ist. Lass unsere Schabach und ihre Freude He says, raise yourself you companion of my shame. And she said, I cannot go anywhere. I'm banned along with you because I'm your wife and I'm stuck here and I cannot take place in these great celebrations. <clears throat> that was Ortrud, by the way. I'm sure you could tell because of the, the wobble, right? There's more wobble in Ortrud than usual. All right. Anyway, all right. So the thing is, Friedrich now feels that she has somehow betrayed him because of her, her dark arts. So she's kind of, you know, she's kind of like a fortune teller. She can see things and she, she works in magic and, and I guess you could say, you know, I don't know, uh, voodoo maybe. I don't know. You do, he do, anyway. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, Friedrich gets all upset in F sharp minor. This is his key when he's angry, right? Now, I don't know, if, from musical standpoint, this is a related key. This is the <coughs> flip side of A major, right? And we have the relative minor that goes down there. So that basically it shows you that Lohengrin and Tellerman are completely opposite as far as their characters and their integrity because Friedrich has lost his integrity because he was tricked by his wife to take the wrong side. Anyway, he gets a little bit hysterical <coughs> because he said, you ruined my life. <laughs> He's obviously very upset. Anyway, um, <clears throat> he says, you have caused me to lose my honor, my sword has been broken, 
And you're the reason that I'm so completely miserable. I've lost my honor. My dear, my dear, how he fell out and my dear, my dear, is him. My dear, my dear, is him. Inter -spur it's interjuxtaposed. That's a new word, interjuxtaposed. Don't worry if you haven't heard it in English before because it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's been just created today for you. No, you hear this very, you know, dark, angry <laughs> F-sharp minor music and then D major, which is also somewhat related, but this is the happy party music. Anyway, so Ortrud, who's very cold and not very nice, she says, she sits there and says, what is making you complain like this? He says, that you, has, you, you have made me go into a shameful situation. If I had a sword, I'd kill you myself. And she says, excuse me, Friedreicher Graf. And she calls him Friedreicher, which I think is, is wonderful. She changes the, the vowels a little bit. Anyway, he says, you're the one who told me that you saw Elsa kill her brother. And... Why have you done this? And you also told me to give up Elsa so that you could <coughs> marry me. And also I understood from you that because you're the last daughter of Radbod, of Frisia, that he would rise and the two of us would end up as rulers. It hasn't seemed to happen yet. And I'm a slave to your lies. And she says, what lies? Verlu! He says, you lied. You! Hat nicht durch sein Gericht he says, that's just horrible. I don't think he's talking about her singing. But <clears throat> he says, because of you, God, let me lose this battle. And she says, God, in this most horrible sound. And he says... How horrible! We turned aus neiden Munde, furchtbar der Name. She says, how horrible that word sounds coming from your mouth. And she says, ha! Do you call your cowardice God? Ha! Denkst du deine Feigheit? Gott! Ach, Gott! Bist du mir drohen, wir eine Weibe drohen? Basically, you're, why are you threatening me, a woman? How can you do that? Because your own weakness, you're trying to make me responsible for it. She says, you know, if <clears throat> you could learn certain things about this Lohengrin character, you'd realize that he is actually not as powerful as you think he is. He says, but he's backed up by God's power. And she says, God's power. Ha! <laughs> Ridiculous. God has craft. Ha ha! She says, give me the power, and I will show you just how weak this Lohengrin really is. Uh, let's see. Gib mir die Macht und sicher zeige ich dir, wer schwacher Gott es ist, der ihn beschützt. It's actually a very weak God that support, supports Lohengrin. Then we get this very weird chromatic music, which I love. And it, it's played by the wind section, so it's even more strange. That didn't mean anything by that, but there are no wind players here, I hope. I only see string players. That's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't count that. You're a horn player. That's okay. You're also, he's also a famous actor, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Du wilde Seherin, wie willst du doch geheimnisvoll den Geist mir neu There's our Unheil theme again. Right? Because she's got something, she's planning something not very nice. No, I love this. It's so incredibly chromatic and mysterious, yeah? Almost magical in a dark way. Anyway, she has a plan. 
And the plan, obviously, is to somehow manipulate Elsa to ask Lohengrin what his name is. And <coughs> that will break all his power, according to Ortrud. And then everybody will see that he's basically supported by some kind of magic, and he's not real. And he's <coughs> not what he says he is. Um, this goes on. Um, and when she's, of course, when she's talking about how to get Elsa to do this, we hear this motive again. We hear over and over in this opera, whenever that comes up. There's a lot to tell you about this act. And she also says something <clears throat> rather strange later when she's discussing his magic, magic quality. She says, if only in the battle you had managed to cut off part of his body, a finger, something like that. She also says, fingers gleed, which is, uh, I guess, limb, but it has other meanings too in German. But um, she said, if you'd only gotten part of his gleed or his finger, he would now be in your power. That's it! And Friedrich is completely horrified by this idea of cutting body parts off of <coughs> Lohengrin, which leads him into another tirade in his usual F-sharp major. He says, it's you who's caused all this dishonor to me. He goes on again, this whole business, you know? If you're trying to betray me again, then woe to you. And she goes, oh, you certainly make a lot of noise and you complain a lot. Why don't you just calm down and I will tell you how we can have vengeance on this Lohengrin who defeated you in public. And I will explain it to you and we will make sweet revenge. And so the two of them plot together to do this. And we have this wonderful little duet between the two of them when they sing together. Unheil, right? Unheil theme. They sing in octaves, actually. also a motive. It's called the Rache Schwur, basically a, an oath to have vengeance. I think it's very interesting that they <coughs> sing in octaves the whole thing. That means they're really united now. It's wonderful. All this dark F-sharp minor, which is basically the evil key, as I've said. It's Telramund's key for when he is complaining, and it's also the key for the hope for vengeance. And now it switches up to something a little different. Very sweet, innocent music. I wonder who it belongs to, this music.
course, Elsa has shown up and she's on her balcony and she's going to sing to the winds, the winds who often heard of her very, her very sad state. But now things have changed and she's been brought love and all her suffering is over. Schlüften die mein Klagen so traurig oft erfüllt. Euch muss ich dankend sagen, wie sich mein Glück entfüllt. And Fortune says, she's there. Sie ist es. So, and Friedrich, Elsa. Oh, and so Elsa goes on. It's interesting also that she's talking about, you know, winds. And of course, the orchestra is winds, right? Flute is playing on the top there. What could be more windy than that? Anyway, it's wonderful. Anyway, Elsa goes on a bit and... Uh, Otru says, get out of here, get away, so I can deal with her. And Friedrich says, why should I leave? Because Otru says, the girl is mine, you take care of the tenor. So <clears throat> he leaves, and I think it's quite interesting when this is going on, because it's basically a very pure harmony, very nice harmonies, very diatonic, you know. Yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, but then, as Otru gets involved in the discussion, the... Uh, Harmonies turn a little strange. That's kind of unexpected. So it means there's dirty work in the background. very happy, Elsa. She's in love. Everything's wonderful. Until Ortrud shows up, of course, and talks to her. So we have the end of the Elsa aria. In Liebe. Beautiful major thirds here. And then nasty minor third with stopped horns and oboes. Stopped horns means that they put their hands in a certain way. It comes out like this. Anyway, so it's a wonderful sound. This gentleman up here can explain to you about stopped horns. But anyway, it's a very, it's a, it's a sound that's used a lot in music from this period and afterwards. It's a very kind of cramped, scary sound, edgy sound, it's wonderful. So, Ortrud says, Elsa, and Elsa says, who, who's calling me? Who do I see who's, who's complaining there in the darkness? And Ortrud says, Elsa, don't you know my voice? Would you? reject me, the poor woman who is so unhappy. And Elsa says, unhappy? Well, you, you're right to call me that, Ortrud says, because I've lived in the, the forest for so long, minding my own business. And what did you want to hurt me for? What have I done to you? So she's already using her psychology. Poor me, Ortrud. I've been so miserable and what did I ever do to you, Elsa, to make you put me in this state? This makes Elsa already kind of nervous. This is kind of fluttery music. Anyway, um, <clears throat> oh, there's so much wonderful stuff here, I can't even go into all of it. But um, <clears throat> somehow, because Ortrud is so sad and pathetic and she's making Elsa feel guilty, she says, oh, you're so, you're so happy, Elsa. Look at me, poor thing. And Elsa says, oh, I, I don't want you to suffer so much. Why don't you, why don't you uh, <clears throat> wait there, and I'll come outside, and we'll have a chat. And this is all in lovely G major, which he says, just wait for me. Uh, let's see now. It's a little too much to play here. Wie, uh, wie schlecht ist deine Güte, Prise, Allmächte, der mich so erglückt, wenn ich das Unglück von mir schließe. Dass ich in Staub vor mir stehe und im Arsch und Rohr Haare mein, ich selber lass nicht zu mir. There's a lot of 
notes there. I'm sure the violinist here noticed I faked a little bit, but that's okay. They have to play all the notes. I just go like this, and, and magic comes out. Anyway, so that's G major. And then, guess what? We make a transition. Anytime you hear loud screaming, it's orchard. Anyway, so we've switched back into F sharp, although this time it's in major. Because orchard is appealing to the, the gods to help her have vengeance. And we hear when it actually does go back into minor for a second. Oh, Don. She's calling Vodan, who we also know as Wotan in other, other Wagner operas. And then... Freya. We also know her from other operas. Actually, the next opera may make an appearance. Anyway, she says, do everything to support my villainy and, and nasty dark arts that I can be happy in my vengeance. <coughs> so, uh, let's see now. Elsa says, Ortrud, where are you? Which I always find amazing after all that screaming for two minutes. <laughs> and then Elsa, see, I told you she's not very smart. Elsa, Ortrud, where are you? She's right down there singing that very loud passage. Oh, okay, I'm coming in. Anyway, so again, after all this. Uh, you know, Best do, and we have our sweet G major again. There comes Elsa, she's coming closer. Or just says, Here I am at your feet. And Elsa says, Oh my god, why are you at my feet? I don't want to see you so. Please stand up. There's no reason for you to be growl, uh, sitting at my feet begging. And Orchard says, Oh, uh, so thank you so much. And uh, <clears throat> Elsa says, Oh, I think that even after what happened yesterday, we can forgive you and forgive your husband, of course, who was defeated in this battle. And, but, but by the way, I'm very happy because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting married and I'd like you to be in my train, be one of my ladies in waiting. And she says, uh, <laughs> That's rather stately music, right? It's about getting married. And C major, also, which is always a very happy key. Um, so when that's over, um, I, the, the key also switches again from C major, and there's a little bit of a transition as it goes between that and a darker key for, for Orchard. It moves through these harmonies. to the dominant of F sharp because we are moving towards that key again, right? And that's always evil. So Ortrud is now going to start her, her uh, intrigues, right? She says, I have one power left that I can see into the future. And I can also see that something terrible is going to happen to you. And Elsa's immediately getting extremely nervous. She says, what do you, what do you mean? What nerve? Sorry, she says, what do you mean? What evil, what terrible thing will happen? She says, let me warn you. Orchard says, don't be so blind in your happiness that you don't see what's happening. And we hear the motive that we've heard from the beginning of the act. Unheil, right? Anyway, this leads to this theme again. 
don't ask me because Ortrud is trying to give Elsa already the idea that something is wrong with her husband to be, and then maybe she should be a little suspicious. And this makes Elsa a little nervous. Makes her nervous for a, one or two bars. But then she comes around. Du erbst der Wolf doch nie ermessen, wie zweifellos mein Herz erlebt. She says, you don't understand how pure my love is for this man. You know no happiness? Have you never been happy, Ortu? Don't you understand what it means to be in love? And please, come with me and, and understand that I have great faith in my Lohengrin and in my love for him. So we have another motive now, which is basically the Glaubens motif, which means that she believes in him. It's also true, let's say, Glaubens Treue, her commitment to her beliefs. Let me teach you what it is to trust. Mich dich lehren, wie süß die Wunder einst erträumt. How beautiful it is pure uh, devotion and uh, commitment to each other. Anyway, this leads to another beautiful theme, which is basically confidence in, in trust. kind of a duet between the ladies because Ortrud is singing, oh, this pride in this woman, it drives me crazy. I've got to break this woman sometime, and or somehow, excuse me, and Elsa's singing about how I should teach you to understand love and trust. This is going on at the same time. So Ortrud first, right? <clears throat> Goes on, Gin, 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 I'm going to just find happiness, and it's, it's just, everything's wonderful. And then the orchestra gets to play this beautiful interlude, which I will play now. It's the same music, though. beautiful, isn't it? This opera just shines with amazing, beautiful music. Ah, there's the Unheil motive again. And Friedrich comes out of the shadows and he says, now the evil is going into this house. So zieht das Unheil in dies Vollführe Weib, was deine Liest ersonnen, ein Werft. So we have these chords, which means we're getting close to F sharp minor again, which is the way the, this scene ends, again in that evil key, which I will not play all this because it takes too long to get there. But anyway, it's interesting how you have these beautiful, sweet things, and then this dark stuff. 
right next to each other. That's the genius of Wagner. Anyway, so after Telramund has finished his little speech, we hear trumpets. Close ones and ones that are very far away. And they do a little fanfare. And then there's the echo from the trumpets far away. I should probably close the lid for that part and open it for the... Uh, anyway, you get the idea. Anyway, so once they've done that, the orchestra joins in and does it too. key it is. It's D major, by the way. You had enough of that key, right? This is interesting to me because it tells me, hmm, it's the, also a similar idea to another opera which has very long, a very long time with one chord. Do you know what that would be? Yes. It's even longer. I think it's more than two minutes. This one doesn't last so long. Rheingold lasts a long time. <laughs> Horn starting it up. I'm doing it a lot faster. Anyway, it goes in big and big, you know. Interesting. So this idea maybe was already going through his head. Anyway, it's a little bit like uh, Bolero. That's all the same until boom, the key changes at the end. It's like, oh, thank God, you know. <laughs> ah. Trompeten, announcing that everybody should <coughs> come in and listen to the herald. Anyway, <coughs> this opens up a scene where we have the uh, <coughs> chorus members saying that we've been woken up by the trumpets to a great day. And we have, it's interesting, the chorus, there's so many chorus members that the men's chorus is actually divided into two groups. And here this first one starts and the second one kind of echoes what they sing. <laughs> In Frühn versammelt uns der Wolf, that's the first group, and the second, In Frühn versammelt uns der Wolf, they're one bar apart, so I'll try to do it at the same time. In Frühn versammelt, in Frühn versammelt uns der Wolf, gar viel, gar viel, gar viel, gar viel, gar viel, verheißen und getan. Anyway, they go back and forth, this is a very long chorus, but there are basically three sections where they sing big D major choruses. Um, that one, there's a lot to tell you about that one, but I'm not going to tell you. It will take too long. Oh, I love this part too. There's one little uh, section that sounds a little like another opera. Oh, what's that? It's Tristan, right? So the little germinations of all kinds of things. Anyway. So they're doing the thing, Garfield, 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 Garfield. Der heiße Kunst der Tag, Garfield, 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 Garfield. Okay, that's the end of the first thing. And now the Herr Rufer is going to announce the latest news. The latest news is that in Bahn und Acht ist Friedrich Tellramund. Weil untreu er den Gotteskampf gewagt. Wer sein noch pflegt, wer sich zu ihm gesellt, nach reiches Recht, der selben Acht verfällt. Basically, 
Telramon is banned from this kingdom, and anyone who tries to hide him or help him will be banned as well. And the chorus says, fine with us. Flow him, flow him, they won't get by it. Then God has put out trust, then God has put out trust. Yeah. And so on. They're basically curses on him, that untrue one. Don't worry, we'll, we will not help him. And the next, uh, the next information that the Heer Wolfer has is he says that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, this God-sent man, this Lohengrin, will be marrying Elsa very soon. And he's been offered the crown of Brabant, but he's turned it down. Instead, he's going to do something else. He's going to have another title, and he's going to be called the protector of Brabant. So I guess he's kind of like the vice president. Something. Starts off the chorus again to have another big D major chorus. Uh, blah, blah, blah. There's a new uh, kind of new theme. And so that will turn into, a, uh, develop into a slightly different motive later, which I will play you. Anyway, so when this is finished, we have. Uh, <coughs> Another blast from the, the trumpets, the four trumpets on the stage. They play something slightly different. Usually they're blasting away going... Or this. I'm sorry. That was the other one. That one. This time... They're playing the grail motive, which I think is very interesting. And then the orchestra joins in. And he says, <clears throat> the herald says, um, the king has also asked me to tell you that we're going to battle tomorrow and that the king will be there and Lohengrin will also be leading you. Oh, how wonderful. That leads to another version of the D major chorus. <laughs> and you notice that they sing... Uh, no one gets motive. Right? And this goes on and on and on and on. And we have that um, <coughs> motive that we've had before. And uh, <coughs> it finishes in a big flourish. I'm, I'm rushing through this now because I have a half an hour to get through the rest of the opera. Uh oh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and anyway, this whole thing ends up. There are four noble Brabantian people from Brabant, yeah, and they are actually associates of Telramund, and they say their lands are going to be taken away because of what's happened to Friedrich, and they're obviously very annoyed. And he says, who will help us with this? And Friedrich, who is banned, appears suddenly and says, I will, I will help you because I'm going to go in front of the king and I'm going to uh, tell him that he's been deceived by magic and I will save our positions. Just at that point, uh, some pages show up and say, get out of the way, make room. Macht Platz! Macht Platz! out of the way, Elsa is coming, and she's going to stand in front of the minister, right? And this is wonderful how the key changes here. And we have the arrival of Elsa to this beautiful corral in the winds and horns. I'd say this is the love consecration theme.
another version of that theme. This is interesting. This is the innocence theme here. And it leads us to a higher key. It's like magic. Anyway, oh, it's so beautiful. Anyway, um, I think it's wonderful how it goes from E flat major with a little transition harmonically using this innocence theme and we arrive a half key higher and then the chorus starts and then the violins play this beautiful melody. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And in the middle of it, we're modulating from, from this E major and he somehow manages to go back to E flat. This little note here brings us back. Oh, God. Isn't that fantastic? I know I'm getting late and carried away, but it's my last one. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> anyway, so we get back to that. It comes back to E flat major. Big, big build up. I'm not going to play the whole big build up because it will take too long. Anyway, we have um, uh, just a little bit. Who that is. <laughs> Everything looks fine. The orchard's in the train. She's not the not the choo-choo train, the, the train of ladies, I mean. Anyway, so she bursts out and says, No longer will I follow you, Elsa. Get out of my way. You should be bowing to me, not I to you. Everybody's in shock. Who is this woman? What is she doing? And <clears throat> there's a whole business about uh, I want to avenge my my pain, and you've caused it, Elsa. And, and Elsa says, what are you talking about? I've been so kind to you. you were, this morning, you were talking to me and begging for me to help you, and now you act like this? What is this all about? And Ortrud sings a kind of aria about how her husband was wrongly accused, and we were banned. <laughs> like a classical aria. Anyway, <clears throat> not for long. And we hear, I love this right in the middle, it's these weird kind of chromatic chords. It's because it's basically trying to put poison into Elsa's heart and mind because she says, everybody knew who my husband was, but nobody knows who your husband-to-be is. He has no name, and it's very, very strange. So it's kind of, this is magic, I think, this music. Anyway, she says, you are afraid to ask his name, but you should, because you should know, because he's going to bring you danger. A lot of screaming from the chorus, carrying on, how terrible, and finally Elsa says, you, you liar, you, you, Ruchlos is a wonderful word. It means nefarious in English, which is a terribly hard word. I can't even translate it from English. Um, basically, evil, you plotting woman. She says, I have an answer for you. He's actually a very pure man, and I will defend him. So rein und edel ist sein Wesen, so tugend reich der Herr Mann. Now, doesn't that sound like another opera? Two. That's my other Tannhäuser place, right? Sounds a little like... Well, 
Well, they were written one opera apart from each other. Anyway, so Elsa says, I'm defending my husband, and Ortrud says, you are so naive and ridiculous, and if you actually found out who he really was, you'd see he's ruled by magic, and possibly evil magic, and there's a complete pandemonium from the ladies are fainting because it's so terrible. Get away from that horrible woman. And this leads us to C major. It's the king and A major. It's Lohengrin. Those are the, remember those two keys always. King, Lohengrin. Schützer von Brabant. And the king sees that there's some commotion going on. He says, what's going on? And Elsa goes to Lohengrin and says, oh, my, my lord, oh, my, my love, get me away from that horrible woman. And Lohengrin says, what is going on? What is that unhappy woman doing next to you? And she says, she's trying to, she's trying to poison my mind and tell me that I should ask you who you are because I shouldn't trust you. And we get our evil motive again. Lohengrin says to Ortrud, Du fürchterliches Weib, you horrible woman. Get away from my fiancé. Steh up von ihr. He doesn't actually say fiancé, but it's the same thing. Now, Elsa, come with me. Come, let's get married. And we have this beautiful um, kind of bridal procession theme, calling the bride to the church. interrupted the procession because he says, King, you have been deceived. And everybody says, what is he doing here? He's been banned. So this is the second member of the Friedrich Telemund family who has interrupted something in the last <coughs> 10 minutes. So this family is very big on interrupting people. Anyway, so he goes on and he says, you've been, the king, you've been dealt a great injustice because this man has magic powers and he's deceived you and he's not what he says he is. Um, he says that shining that you see before you in his, his armor is actually evil. And uh, I love this little passage because there's another motive here that also sounds something like something in the ring. This doesn't it sound like... You know this motive, the spear motive from the ring. Um, Anyway, he goes on and on and on, and I'm not going to tell you all about it because I'm running out of time. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Lohengrin defends himself. He says, it's not true. I have great honor, and I am, I am pure, and I'm supported by, by only by goodness. That's a very simplified version of what he says. And I only have to answer this question about who I am to one person. Actually, Friedrich has just said, why does he never tell anybody who he is? That means he has a terrible secret to hide. And Lohengrin says, but only one person do I have to answer on this question. It's going to be my wife, Elsa. Actually, I don't understand that section, because he says, you're never supposed to ask me this. And then he says, there's only one person I have to answer on this one, Elsa. Maybe he's a tenor. He's probably confused. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. And we have, again, that evil motive. Because he can see now that his wife a wife to be, excuse me, is looking very nervous. She's shaking, actually. And that has to lead us to a big ensemble where everybody's going to express their point of view. But it's very mysterious. I love this music. right? This 
something in Rheingold that sounds a lot like this. Near the end. So I mean, some of these harmonic things actually do find their ways into the future, which I think is great. Anyway, they all are singing at once about, <coughs> let's see, Lohengrin and Elsa are singing about how this, this evil has come into their lives now, this doubt that Elsa is feeling. And Ortrud is very happy that it seems to be that they've made an impact on Elsa and that she's probably going to, to give in and, and ruin everything for the two of them. Doubt, marriage, even though there's some hope from Lohengrin uh, somewhere here. Um, Oh, he says, oh heaven, protect her from danger. So he's positive still, actually. I think I played something wrong. Anyway, the whole thing ends up in a big blaze. And at the end of it, in full fortissimo, is that do not ask me motive again. And the king says, forget all this stuff. You're a wonderful hero. You're so brave and wonderful. And we will now go to the church and witness your wedding. The chorus sings. Everything's great. And Friedrich somehow has managed to get close to Elsa. And this time we hear the motive very fast because he's trying to whisper something to her. He says, Vertraue mir, lass dir ein Mädel heißen, das ihr Gewissheit schafft. Ich bete mir, lass dir die kleinste Glieder anreißen, das Fingerspitze und ich schwöre dir, was er dir hält. So spreitet er. He says, basically, get close to Lohengrin if you just give me a little part of his body. And I, you'll see that, I don't know which little part he's talking about, but anyway, he says, you get a little part, cut something off, and you'll see that he's powerless, and he's, he's actually put together by magic. I promise you I will show you what he's doing. And then, which is quite funny, Lohengrin runs up to the two of them and says, Elsa, mit wem verkehrst du dort? Which in modern German also has a double meaning. You can ask your German friends. But it basically, he's saying, with whom are you talking? And he says, get away from him, you cursed one. So basically, the Telruman family is having a bad day. Everybody wants to get rid of them. But anyway, once that's passed, we hear the organ. And that means it's time to go to the church. I guess the organist was late. That's why it took so long to get going. And Lohengrin says, hail, my beautiful Elsa. Let's go stand before God. And we have that beautiful consecration music again. We've had this before with the chorus in E flat major, but this time it's in glorious C major. And uh, <clears throat> we have many trumpets blaring. Everybody's very happy. Let's see now. The last thing of the chorus is. Uh, <laughs> Orchestra. And again, the motive of don't ask me. <laughs> big trumpets and big ending. <sighs> then what do we hear? I'm sure you've heard it before, and, and better, I'm sure. Sorry, I've lost my pages. Ugh, it's too much noise. Anyway, that's the famous third act prelude. And uh, it has, I mean, it has basically three things. It's a, kind of a Hochzeitsthema, this thing. And then there's a middle 
שופטים. charming, very, <clears throat> in some ways, very courtly. And uh, when we get to the end of this thing, um, <clears throat> it finally calms down. And then we, it leads us to the bridal music. Oh, that's not the right one. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. It's some, it's, I'm, wait a minute. Uh, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, That's the right one. <coughs> I'm sure you've heard that before. <laughs> and then the chorus goes on. Treudisch gefühlt, zieht dahin, wo am... And etc. As I said, you've heard this before. Uh, there is a nice little middle section, uh, which is quite charming. It's like little little bells. And eight ladies sing this beautiful thing, which leads us to a passage which... Uh, Actually, one of the musicians from the orchestra said, it sounds like Elgar. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But it, it's not. All right. So we have the bridal chorus. We've heard this before. And finally, it's over. This is wonderful, this transition from B flat major, how it sneaks into another key completely. <laughs> sind allein zum ersten Mal allein seit wir uns sahen and Lohengrin says we're alone finally for the first time and that's the love theme this one nun sollen wir der Welt entrollen Sorry, he's very tired, Lohengrin. <coughs> it's been a very long few days. Anyway, <coughs> and we come to another theme in this uh, duet, which is kind of Liebes, I guess they call it Liebesseligkeit, the happiness that comes from love. They both sing this, actually. <laughs> And this key, it's just so soft that the strings have, have mutes on and there's this very delicate wind playing coming through. It's the, it's the height of, of romanticism and just joyful, <coughs> tender music. I love it. So the two of them are very happy, at least for five minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, there are many operas where people are very happy with each other for five minutes until something happens. Um, and of course, you know what's going to happen because Elsa has been poisoned for some time by many people, and she's going to have to <coughs> start asking questions. So she starts to suggest certain things, and she says, "I, <coughs> I, uh, where should I tell you about where she does it? One of the first times. Yes, she's talking about love and this feeling. I'm." having, is this really love? What should I call it? Oops, she's starting. She said, this love, what, it's such an amazing thing. What should I call it? This thing, you could, this word you can almost not describe. It's so wonderful. Just like 
your name. I'll never get to know it, will I? How will I ever have my highest happiness if I can't call you by your name? And Lohengrin says, Elsa. <laughs> oh, how beautiful your name must be. Here she goes on. And he tries to distract her. But this beautiful thing about how <clears throat> the sweet fragrances are the only magic that we have to worry about. And we're, we're <clears throat> surrounded by beauty. Starts with the winds. It's beautiful. He's trying to, to make her more calm. And it's, I'd be very calm listening to that. It's beautiful. It's like a Schubert lead. It's very beautiful. And we hope it works. Doesn't work. You see, the music gets very nervous all of a sudden. Anyway, so she's starting again, and she's getting to the point where she's almost asking him directly, oh, make me proud through your trust that I would know who you are. It must be very important. He says, be quiet, Elsa. And he, she says, it's important that you have my trust and that you know that you can trust me if you give me this one thing. Uh, now this time it draws a more stern and serious response. The other time we kind of got this beautiful stuff. Not this time. This time it's a very serious response from Lohengrin who said that I have shown you the greatest trust and that you agreed to not ask me these things. And I count on you and I trust that you would do what you say. And if you don't ask me and if you keep your promise, you will be elevated to the highest of women. Vertrauen hast du mir schon zu danken, da deinem Schwur ich glauben gern gelehrt. Wir sind immer du vor dem Gebot erwanken, doch and this is another version of the, the love theme. Liebes Valle, consecrating love. And he then gets tender to her again. There are other sections that are a little more... Ah, oh, it's five. I heard that watch. And he's talking about oh many other things which I don't have time to tell you about. Okay, <clears throat> basically, at the end of his big long speech, we hear a version of the Unheil theme again that he says that she should not be influenced by these things. And again, don't ask the question. And he says we can be so happy because I came here through shining and through light and positive energy to bring you joy. And unfortunately, this does not work. And we hear the, the Unheil motive for the first time very quick. Actually, that's not quite true. It came in the end of the second act when Friedrich was talking to her. But this is a more extended version. When Elsa is saying, my god, what do I hear? She's getting more and more agitated. 
Grüß Gott, was muss ich hören? Frisch Zeug, es gab kein Mut. Auf heute ist es gut. Someday you may be robbed away from me through your <coughs> repentance and your love's repentance. Anyway, she gets more and more hysterical, and as she gets close to answer, I'm sorry, as she gets close to asking the question, she starts to see visions, like, don't you, she says, uh, don't you hear anything? Don't you hear something coming? And she <coughs> says, no, there's, there's nothing coming. And then you hear the swan motive, and she's seeing visions, like, oh my God, look! It's the swan, the swan. He's coming back. He's coming back over the water to get you. You're calling him. He's pulling the boat. And Lohengrin says, Elsa, calm down. Stop being crazy. Peace, tell me Ruhe gave, and nothing can give me peace. What do you want to know, Elsa? What are you daring to do? She says, listen to me. Listen to my question. I want to know your name. Tell me your name. Stop it, Elsa. Where'd you come from? Vadia. at that moment where she asks him and Lohengrin says, oh my God, what are you doing? In rushes Telramund with his four friends and they want to obviously kill Lohengrin and Elsa is very quick. She says, save yourself, here's your sword. And luckily they <clears throat> are still having this long conversation because if they were doing anything else it would be extremely difficult, I think, to grab his sword and take care of Telramund and Lohengrin does manage to kill Telramund quickly and that, that was that big noise there. And uh, <clears throat> then the four nobles bow at Lohengrin's feet because they realize they've also been defeated. And we get, <clears throat> the music calms down and it becomes very sad. And you hear this kind of a version of the Untreu, I'm sorry, uh, what did I say, Untreu, Unheil, I want to say. You have a version of this Unheil music because it's finally worked. And Elsa has given in to the pressure and the doubt, and Lohengrin says, now all our happiness is gone. Wie nun ist all unser Glück dahin? And then we hear the uh, clarinet play the love theme from earlier. But this time, when the oboe takes it over, it resolves differently into a diminished chord, which is always rather tragic. And Elsa says, oh my God, have mercy on me. <coughs> Take this, take this dead man before the king, and <clears throat> we will explain what happened when we're all there together. And we have a very loud version of the Unheil theme after he says, Take him away to the king. And Lohengrin says, Dress up my beautiful wife in her best clothes and we'll go.
go before the king and I will explain everything, who I am, where I came from, all this stuff. And the scene ends with the famous don't ask me motive. And then we get prepared for the last scene. We have lots of trumpets. You'll see them all over the house. Four trumpets in the front. Those are the long trumpets. Those are the king's trumpets. Or I call them king's trumpets, but they also are played when the, the herald speaks. These guys. But now we have a lot of other trumpets because people are coming from all over. They're Saxons, they're Thuringians, they're Brabantians, there's everything. Um, so we hear trumpets first. It goes on and on and on and on. And uh, there's more and more of them. And we get this big theme, which is basically a call to arms because they're also meeting because they're going to go to war to defeat invaders. So this big theme I call the, you know, call, I should say, going to war. Trumpets coming. And a lot more trumpets. Get more and more trumpets until it gets completely crazy and all of them are going off all at the same time. Uh, I can't do that, I don't think. Call to arms music. I almost did it. And the chorus comes in High Kernish Heinrich in pure C major with high C's. High Kernish Heinrich, Kernish Heinrich, high. And that means, of course, Kernish Heinrich comes in and, of course, has to make a speech. Again, this is a nice little speech, though. Thank you very much, you gentlemen. I'm so happy that we're going to war together. And it's, I mean, it sounds very, very happy. Habt Dank, ihr Lieben von Brabant. Wie fühl ich froh, das Herz entbrannt. Find ich in jedem deutschen Land. And he goes on, and most important things he says, Für German land, the German sword. And that's very inspired because the chorus sings it right after him. It's more blaring. It's wonderful. It says, where is the God-sent one who is going to help us with this battle? But first, we have uh, people bringing out a coffin. Was bringen die? Was tun sie kund? Die Männer sind des Telramund. The king says, what are they bringing out here? I guess those days they did when somebody was dead, they just bring a big coffin out and show everybody. So in there is obviously Telramund, and he is brought out, and right after that, Elsa is brought, kind of supported by her ladies. It's interesting, this time the motive of don't ask me is played a little bit softly in the winds because she's, always, she's already made the mistake, and it's, you can tell that <clears throat> something is not right. And the, the innocence motive um, comes right after that. Uh, I 
I call that's one version of the innocence motive, but it's also connected to this one, I'm sorry. Getting a little tired, I'm sure. I'm sure you are too, but I'm almost done. Oh, sorry. Um, then, this one, this is very interesting. That's the unheil motive, but this time it sounds very sympathetic. It's usually, you know, quite dark or it's alone, but this time there's something about it because the chorus is singing, oh, she looks so sad. Now, this is the innocence motive I was going to talk about, which I misquoted there. Usually you have this motive played like this. Right? Goes up. This time, her innocence isn't so clear anymore because she broke her word, her promise. So instead of going up to A major, kind of goes sour. It's a shock, actually, because you always hear the same thing. It's like it's glorious that she's so innocent and that she's so pure, but not anymore. It's like this. I love that. And that moves us to Lachlatz, Lachlatz, make place, here comes Lohengrin. Everybody's very happy to see him, the king's extremely happy to see him. And Lohengrin says, my lord and king, let me tell you, I have to explain something. This man came into my <clears throat> bedroom and I had to kill him. And everybody's, oh my god, what, what's going on? And Lohengrin explains that <clears throat> He has to make a great complaint about this man because he's basically plotted to poison the mind of his wife and through, through Ortrude, the two of them have managed to make her break her promise and I think considering all these things, it's completely just that I have killed this man. And everybody says, yes it is. And <laughs> So that's that. But anyway, he's, the thing that bothers him the most is that his wife has been corrupted, and he's basically announcing to everybody that Elsa has broken her word, and, and it's a catastrophe, actually. Um, he says that um, <coughs> Telramund has led my wife to break her oath. <laughs> Betrayal to me. The woman, thus why that God has trusted to me. Thus God will unfathered as a demon. Be God has He soft and It's wonderful how it changes this music, becomes so tragic and 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 harmonically kind of rich in some ways. Anyway, he says, everybody listen to me. I now have to tell you who I am because I, my, my wife has broken her promise and I cannot stay here anymore because now <clears throat> the situation has completely changed. And he says, look how I have to leave this beautiful day. about my secret. And this leads us through the dominant of A major to A major again, just like the prelude, and it leads us to his famous Graal Erzählung, or Infernum Land, where he explains where he's from. I come from a very far away place, and there's a castle there called Monsalvat. It's a temple where it has a very, very beautiful vessel in it, and we hear the grail motive. We know what it is, right? And there's a band of brothers there who worship this grail and keep it safe. And 
onwards, and he talks about how every year a, a dove comes from heaven to hover over this grail to also make us stronger every year in our devotion to it and just the, the wonder of the entire thing. And he then says this thing that we all protect and worship is called the grail. And we have great faith through our devotion to this and we are all knights of the grail, blah, blah, we like this. And he says, anybody who is a servant of the grail is given a special heavenly power. And also we are sent out to fight for justice and protect the, the innocent. And the only condition of this is that we're not allowed to name who we are. We're not supposed to say that. And <clears throat> that's why I'm here, and that's why I have not allowed anybody to ask me who I am, except the promise was broken, so I have to tell everybody who I am. So listen, everybody. Let me answer this question. Listen, I will tell you the answer to the forbidden question. I come from the grail. I was sent from the grail. Mein Vater Parzival trägt seine Krone. My father Parzival has the crown. He's the king. Seine Ritter ich bin Lohengrin genannt. And he's finally told everybody who he is. Son of Parzival and my name is Lohengrin. Lohengrin genannt. I never understood quite why Wagner wrote this huge fortissimo at the end. You always see it sounds like this. Um, Bin Lohengrin ge <laughs> genannt, it said, but it's this enormous orchestra, so you don't really hear him say the last thing. My name, I am Lohengrin. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, but you know, it will, you can read it in the, the title, and we'll say. And here we, now we understand why this uh, Trennungsmusik, or the, the thing about being separated, makes sense at the end of the opera, because the people realize that now that he said who he is, he can't stay, right? So we have his motive, <laughs> triumphant. that, Elsa starts to get very faint because she <clears throat> realizes the whole thing has not turned out very well. Um, she says, the, the earth is starting to shake under me. What a night. Oh, get me some air. Help. Luft der Unglückselgen. Der Schwan. Der Schwan. The swan is reappearing. And everybody says, oh no, the swan. It's a bad thing because it's going to take him away. And it's interesting that we hear Lohengrin's motive, if I can find this, the first time in minor. This is, it's always major, right? This time it's in minor. It's interesting, huh? And Elsa says, ah, horrible. It's the swan. And it means that the grail knights and the, the grail at Montsalvat is sending for him to come home. So we have the swan motive, and Lohengrin sings this beautiful thing to the swan, my beautiful swan. Oh, this last time that we journey together, this sad journey, I wish I could have spared you this. And maybe in a year, when I've been here for a while, we could have gone together, and he explains why he says that. He says, Elsa, if you'd only waited a year, I would have had a big surprise for you. I'll tell you the surprise in a minute. Dein Bruder 
wieder den du tot gewähren. He says, if you'd waited a year, your brother would have come back. You would have seen him again, the one you thought was dead, which, of course, leads to great consternation. Everybody's shocked. And then he sings a last goodbye song to her. Kommt er dann heim, wenn ich ihm fern in Leben dies Horn, dies Schwert, den Ring sollst du ihm geben. Since when he comes back, <coughs> give him this horn, give him the sword, and give him this ring. The horn will help him if he's ever in danger to get help. The sword will help him in victory, and what will the ring do? It will bring us the, the next opera. That's the way. No. <laughs> no, he says the ring will actually remind him of me, and he's been, he will be freed from all this terrible shame and, and uh, misery. So he says, goodbye, my wife. Go, leb wohl. I was going to say goodbye. Leb wohl, tot Hade bra, leb wohl. The grail is calling me, it will be angry if I don't come back. Everybody is just miserable. They! shows up now. You'll know when you hear me sing. Um. swan is, who's pulling that boat. It's the young Gottfried. It's the guy who will inherit the kingdom of Brabant. Everybody is totally shocked. What's, what does this mean? What is this woman talking about? <clears throat> and she goes through another, I call a schreierei. It's a <laughs> horrible thing to sing. It's just one high A after the other. And I think there are 10 or something. Some, I have to count them sometime. It's a ridiculous amount. Poor or true. They usually sound a little bit like I just did. But <clears throat> we have a very good one who has no trouble getting through it. And after all this, poor thing has to go up to an even higher note. After. I don't think they're talking about her singing, I hope. But, but it's, they say, it's, it's, if it's amazing, Elsa, and it's great that I was able to, to manipulate you to ask the question. Because if you hadn't asked, after a year, the brother probably would have been freed and come home on his own. Anyway, <clears throat> some of this does <clears throat> come as news to Lohengrin. He didn't know all of this. But of course, she has to scream some more first. And first, this is the Lohengrin thinks for a minute, starts to pray. He looks at the, the swan, and he gets near the swan, and all of a sudden something starts to happen. The swan changes into the boy, Gottfried. And then Lohengrin says, look here, here is the Duke of Brabant. I say he shall be the leader of this entire place, and here is your new Führer. And 
his music gets softer and softer because he's disappearing. And Elsa gets hysterical and says, my husband, my husband! My God! My God! The Lohengrin motif in minor, right? Ha, ha, ha.